Okay, um, this is balance sheets, so I'm going to get rid of this bit first of all. But before you start, you've got to know what a balance sheet is trying to show. Balance sheets, basically, all they show is what your assets are compared to your liabilities. So as a company, they can, you've got to be able to understand what assets are, but you also need to know what liabilities are. This is actually quite an easy topic, it's just that um, they're quite scary words to start off with. Um, can't spell liabilities, what's it? If you're not very good at spelling like me, it's worth getting your spelling from the text so you don't say it wrong in the exam. Okay, so assets. Um, assets are things that you own. So I'll give you some examples of assets that I own. I own a house, um, a car, and about eight bikes, none of which I need. Um, liabilities are things that you owe. So these are things where I've got to pay back certain people. So I owe money for my house, so I've got, I pay a mortgage. Um, I, pay, I have to pay for a loan I got, and I owe my mum lots and lots of money. All right, so they're my liabilities. But you've got to try and turn them into two different things. Assets can either be fixed assets, or they can be current assets. Right. So a fixed asset is one that you're going to own for more than one year. And also, they're quite hard to turn into cash. Right, so I'll give you an example of that, is um, a football club could be in loads of debt, but the problem is that they, their main asset might be their stadium, but a stadium is really, really hard to turn to cash. So that, that's called a fixed asset. A current asset, on the other hand, is an asset that you are going to have for less than a year, that you think. And not only that, you expect it to be quite easy um, to turn into cash. Okay, sometimes they say that it's quite liquid, so your money's quite liquid. So, for example, uh, for a company, that would be like stock. Um, it would also be like if someone owed you money, and they're called debtors when they owe you money. And also, obviously, cash is the most obvious current asset, because cash is already cash, so it's obviously easy to turn into money. Um, right, so there are the two types of assets. There are two types of liabilities. There are um, current liabilities... And there are, now it would be much easier if they called them fixed liabilities, but they don't. They call them long-term liabilities. Um, but the theory is exactly the same. Um, current liabilities have to be paid back in less than a year. Long-term liabilities have to pay back in more than one year. Okay. So they're the four kind of key terms you need to know. But the, what they'll always ask you about in the exam is they'll ask you, and I'm going to go back to the, um, the past paper question. They're going to ask you what, where is it? They're going to ask, they're going to ask you a few things. But I'm, I'm, at the minute I'll just fill in the gaps because it'll be easy to do that again. Okay. Here it's asking us to say what is um, total assets. So that means you'd have to add up your current assets to your fixed assets. So that'd be 208 plus 52. So that is um, 260. So you'd write 260 in that gap. Okay. The next gap we've got to do is total net assets. So that's saying total net assets is all the assets take away all the liabilities. Okay. Now... You've got to get your calculator out here if you find this hard. So the assets are 240 and the liabilities are 100. So the total net assets will be um, 140. So that's what goes there. And just for doing that, you're going to get two marks. You don't actually have to, um, you have to know much there. Right, so we've already got the two marks there, so that's done. It says, what is meant by the term fixed assets? Remember, these are assets you're going to have for more than one year, or you plan to have for more than one year. Um, and also, they are difficult to turn into cash. So I'd say those two things, that would get me two marks, but then I'd give an example. So a fixed asset would be a factory. Okay. Um, next question is, why are balance sheets um, useful to the shareholders of Greg PLC? 
Right, this qu second question, um, a lot of people don't do very well at. So it's saying, why are the balance sheets uh, shown useful to the shareholders of Greg PLC? So I'd actually try and quote from the um, balance sheet a little bit as well, as well as the same, my kind of obvious points. Right, so the first thing is, um, they're important because Greg can see if the a company is uh, profit not profitable, is successful or not. He can't see whether it's profitable or not, he can see whether it's being successful. A successful company is more likely to have more assets um, than liabilities. So what we saw in that first example was their net assets equals 100. Um, remember to say 100 million. Um, so you could say they, they've got more assets than they've got the liabilities, so you can say that they're going to be successful. Um, so that means shareholders will be happy because then they can, um, what can they do? They'll get more money and they'll get dividends. Okay, that's the first thing you might say. A second thing, now this is getting a little bit bigger, but I'm going to say it anyway. You might be able to see whether the business is going to survive or not. And this is where you have to know a little bit. Normally, businesses know they're doing well when their current assets are more, so more, than the current liabilities. The reason is, and I'll say that in a second, um, right, so for example, if you had current assets of um, 40 million, but your current liabilities were 60 million, what's the problem? Even, and I'll, I'll say another one, you've got fixed assets of 200 million. Right, even though you've got 240 million pounds worth of um, assets, What's the big problem? The only assets that you can get to very quickly are these current assets. And that means that you could end up going bust because you can't pay off your current liabilities in time because your fixed assets are not easy to turn into money. Does that make sense? Um, so the second reason why balance sheets are important are the company has to work out, has they got more current assets than current liabilities? If they have, then they'll be able to survive. In the example you'll see for Greg's, um, both for both of them, they've got a more... For, for both years, they've got much more current assets, sorry, current liabilities than they've got than current assets. So even though they've got all these fixed assets and they look quite good, not enough of them are current, which means actually they could have easily gone bust during this time. If you say that and explain that, that'll sound really, really good. Right, just to say more things you can say, because I want you to make sure you get the marks for this. Um, you can say which year they seem to be better in. Um, so in this one, you can say there, this was 140, wasn't it? I'll put that in a better colour. Right, you could say that shareholders are able to see that in June 2009, they've got more um, net assets. So that's good. So they've, if they've got more assets, that means the business is probably being successful. But then you can also look at this and you can say that bit about current assets take away current liabilities. So here, their current assets of 42 take away their current liabilities of um, 84 means they're minus 42 million which is quite dodgy in 2008. Then you go on to the next year. The next year they've got minus, um, 20, minus 29 million. So you could say they're getting better with their current assets over their current liabilities. But you could still argue with both situations, you know, minus 29 million is still a hell of a lot of money. So they could have easily gone bust during that time. So I would say if I was, if you could, you could try to say as many of those things I've just said. Um, as long as you say two of those things and explain them, you'll easily get four marks. Right, before I tell you what to do here, can you try and have a go at doing this question first? Um, right, so, this is the balance sheet for Arga this time. Right, first of all, they'll ask you, give, give me one example of a fixed asset. And you can always say, for a fixed asset, is a factory. That's an easy one. Um, other things that could be fixed assets could be machinery. Um, anyway, part B it says, current assets include stock. Suggest two types of stock Arga Group might hold. Now, I've seen this question before, and it's always a bit of a dodgy question. So, I've always said for stock they could have is, I've always said they could have finished stock and unfinished. Now, finished stock is where you've actually completely got the product completely finished. So, it'd be like a whole arga. Unfinished stock would be like all the little pieces you need for the arga. Um, okay, that's how I'd explain it anyway. Right, here we go. I've got to try and f uh, fill in the shaded bits. So I've got three shaded bits. The first one is total current assets up here. 
All I've got to do then is add up these three numbers, 61 plus 103 plus 52. Okay, so that adds up to um, 216, so I'll put that in there. All right, the next one is, is net current assets. Now, when you see net current assets, that means current assets take away current liabilities. And the clue is in the name where it says net current. Now, whenever you're not sure about this, use the other year to help you. Um, so, for example, they've already got the number for 2003. So you can see 216 take away 102 makes 114. So you think, well, if I've done it for that one, I can do it for this one. So it'd be 224 take away 120 equals 100 and... What's that? 104, isn't it? Yeah. 104. Okay, so that's two of them done. Now this bit at the bottom, um, I've never really, it's never really mattered before, but this is why it's called a balance sheet, so I'll just do a line in between. You have to know very little for this for GCSE. All you need to know is this number, the total net assets employed, the bottom one basically, will always be the same as this number, total capital employed. And that's all you ever need to know. That, whenever you see a number like that and it's equal to the one at the bottom, you know it's right. All the other stuff you have, n have to have no, no real knowledge about at all. But that's total capital employed, 282. And it's just that number plus that number plus a number, another number would equal that. You can tell that's right because if you look at the 2002 one, if you add up those three numbers there, it adds up to 272. So all I've done here is I've done 282. Um, take away 152. Take away 92. And I've got 38, so reserves is 38 there, whoops. And just to make sure I'm right, sometimes I add them together, I go 92 plus 38 plus 152 equals, and it equals 282, so I know I'm right. Okay. Right, this is a fairly easy question. Two stakeholders would be interested in a business in the balance sheet. One of them we always know is shareholders. And they'd be interested. Why would shareholders be interested? Because they want to make sure the business is um, successful. Don't say profitable because you can't tell whether it's profitable or not from a balance sheet. You can see whether it's being successful or not. Whether it's got more assets than liabilities. And they want it to be successful because they want to make um, money off, what do they call it, when, when shareholders get um, money given to them? They get dividends. Um, a second person who might be interested in it is the, um, what do you call them, the suppliers. Because if you were a supplier and you realised this company had more, loads of current liabilities and not many current assets, I'd worry they'd never pay me back. So it'd be a really good thing for suppliers to look at to make sure they're going to get pay, paid their money back. Um, what's another one? Um, you could say employees. An employee might want to look at it to make sure that their, biz, their job is safe because they'd be worried that they might lose their job. And then finally, banks. A bank might give a loan to a company they might say, well, look at their balance sheet. They've got way too many current liabilities, so there's no way we're going to give them a loan because we don't trust them. So a bank will check to make sure the business is able um, to pay back loan.